Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada. Located 40 kilometers north of Toronto is where the temperamental Blues Bruising Cup winning keeper of the puck, Jordan Bennington, is born. Yes, when you give in to hate, anything is possible with the human body and mind. To bring yourself to winning Lord Stanley's Cup or murder. Join me as I poorly look into Canada's own femme fatale, Grace Marks. King of the Canadian Hill, make a murder in our Ontario. Walking into the very busy Timmy's at the corner of 16th and Bayview was an intense feeling for me as the flu bug was doing its mess about this past month and the germs were aplenty deep in my mind. An elderly woman waved me over to her table in the coffee shop with a 3M mask on, disinfecting wipes at the ready beside her metal Tim Hortons travel mug. She would not let the staff hand her a paper anything as she proclaimed to me that paper absorbs anything and everything, young man. I'm 40 years old. This was a comforting notion to me, as I knew that she would not infect me with the sickness, as I poked around for the truth about Grace Marks. An odd thing happened before this interview slash tale was to be told as the interviewee asked me to make sure that I understood and wrote down her name correctly. Hey now, she said, you got my name, right? You know, my name is Mary Whitney. That's my name, kiddo. Again, I'm 40. Yes, ma'am, heard you and wrote it down right here, Mary Whitney, and showed her my writing pad as proof. Mary made a very audible sigh and rolled her eyes, then said, Well, okay, let's get into it. In Richmond Hill, Ontario, in 1840, lived a rich, fancy farmer that went by the name of Thomas Kinner. Kinner was exiled from England by his father due to Thomas nearly fornicating with half of the country's adult women. Thus, with a hasty exit, avoiding the wrath of many a angry husbands, brothers, and fathers. Oof. Kenner was well on his way to sleeping around with all the good ladies of Richmond Hill when he came across the likes of a Canadian picture model named Nancy Montgomery, hired her as his live-in housekeeper, leading to both of them falling in love with each other and settling down to do unmarried but committed couples life stuff together. It seemed only natural, Kenner did, to hire James McDermott to tend to Kenner's day-to-day -day farm work activities and house repairs. Due to the fact that Thomas Kenner was a rich, fancy playboy farmer that hated farming. Ergo, it only made too much sense for Kenner to hire a housemaid for his housekeeper paramour, for it was indeed something that Nancy hated to do, her job. And lo and behold, he hired the likes of an Irish lass by the name of Grace Marks. Miss Marks fell deeply in love with a dreadfully dapper Kinner at first sight and wanted to wed him. But Thomas's heart was truly with Nancy and thus had only eyes for her, Nancy's love. That and Grace was a 16 year old child too. With that revelation, an insanely mad in love and vengeful Grace Marks then seduced the 19-year-old James McDermott, who was trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the British Army and suggested, too, soon after Thomas Kenner left his farmhouse in the morning for a day trip to Toronto, strangle Nancy Montgomery to death with the hilt of an axe, then chop her up with said axe into bits and place said bits into a large fancy tub as a great hiding place, which McDermott happily did so. Then, when Thomas came home late that night, he entered through his front door, placed his items down, 
and went into his study and poured himself a drink. Then James snuck up and shot Thomas point blank in the heart, under the guidance of Grace. Then she proposed a plan to steal a bunch of valuable items slash coin and run away together, which they did, until they got arrested at the USA-Canada border 24 hours later for first degree murder. With a nice quick trial that had James McDermott being convicted of murdering Thomas Kenner and hanged, with Grace Marks being convicted of the same murder. Why not include the murder of Nancy Montgomery, you ask? Who cares? Don't matter. Murder is a murderer. That's what the courts figured. And gave her a life sentence in a local prison. Mr. McDermott was upset by the verdict and before his hanging stated that Grace was the mastermind of the whole evil deed that was to be done that deadly day in every detail Yanumtis, while Miss Marks claimed tearfully that she was insane with love with Thomas and a helpless patsy victim that was along for the ride, with James's jealousy journey that came from his views of Mr. Kinner's rich, comfortable lifestyle, and thus, through trust and most likely lust, the male-dominated court went with her statement as fact. While a prison sentence was given to her, Grace Marks spent some time in a mental health rehabilitation clinic, then went on to put in 30 years in an actual prison for her court-sentenced crimes, only to be released by a smitten judge, pardon of her crimes, and then disappeared from the history books, never to be seen or heard from again. But it is to my understanding that in a Richmond Hill graveyard, where Thomas and Nancy's remains are buried, sometimes you can hear the haunting cries of, No, Grace, stop! Every Grey Cup Championship weekend. But you know what can be seen and not heard, folks? The David Dunlop Observation Tower built in 1939 and it's the largest telescope in Canada with its 2,000 millimeter wide lens, bro. Whoa, look at it, look at it.